All right, so today, are going to be clickers? Uh, yes, you're going to need clickers. Today, you're going to need clickers. Let's do that first. So let's begin by talking about exotic species. What do you think the word or the term exotic species stands for? Let's begin with what do you think? Is it, oh, go away. Is it an animal that is from Africa? Is it a plant that is from Africa? Is it a plant or animal that naturally lives in an area or is it an organism that is not native to a particular area? What was your answer? You should have said D. Please circle D. Please circle D on your sheet. An exotic species refers to an animal that is not native to a particular area. Page 42, you said, right? Awesome. Yeah. Humans and exotic species. On page 42, I'm reading, humans constantly bring ecosystems into contact with each other, and they tend to take organisms with them when they travel, often with serious consequences. Oh, I need to go back here. Here's an example of an exotic species, the opossum. Once native to South America, only it's now found in North America. When South America and North America were close together, and there was some climate change going on, the opossums moved north, they've adapted, and, uh, and now they live here. Is that on your sheet? You can just write example opossum. You don't need to write the whole thing, probably. I think I gave you the answer already. Humans tend to introduce new species when... Ah, I did it again, didn't I? Humans tend to introduce new species when they travel, when they buy at pet stores, when they send packages in the mail, or they eat honey. And I'm giving you a bit of a hint here. A good example of this is when humans introduced, and it's right there on page 42. And I didn't have any of that report about the killer bees. What can I do for you? Oh, 1.30, right? Okay, yeah. Then give me a second here. Why did the humans do this? Do you remember? Why did they introduce, whoopsie, why did they introduce the killer bees? Was it because they wanted to kill off the local bees? Was it because it sounded fun? Was it because they wanted to increase honey production? Or was it just an accident? Were you listening, Brady Patterson? No. You should know the answer there, right? I look forward to seeing that. And the answer is, of course, whoopsie, quick there. Correct answer is, oh, my video is starting, I can hear it. Correct answer is C, yes, they wanted to increase honey production. A resident said, oh. you have room to think, room to eat, and room to dream. Because it's not a room, it's a residence. Residence in. For untold millennia, the great rainforests of Central America have been kept alive by one of the tiniest and least understood of creatures. But now, their fragile world has been invaded by an alien species from Africa. The result of a scientific experiment gone horribly wrong. How did the zebra mussels, there's a picture right there, why do you think they're called zebra mussels? Because they're striped, they look like zebras. How did the zebra mussel get from Western Asia to the Great Lakes? Oh, I did it again. Can't say. I just did. So, how did the zebra mussel get from Western Asia to the Great Lakes? People brought over his food and threw some leftovers in the lake. 
Was it brought in to kill off another pest? Was it brought in to clean up algae in the lakes? Or is it in the bilge or toxic wastewater from boats? And I almost read it. So if you were following along in your book on page 42, you would know it. Page 42. <coughs> Answer is D. Whoa. Correct answer is D. It's in the bilge or the toxic wastewater from both. It says right there. Um, Biologists believe that this tiny valley valve, a native of the Caspian Sea in Western Asia, entered the Great Lakes, and the bilge water discharged from ships. In the Great Lakes, this exotic species found lots of food, and so it spread quickly. So it's not native. It's what? Exotic. <coughs> In 1991, there were extensive colonies of zebra mussels in Lake Ontario and small groups we found in Georgian Bay and Lake Huron. By 1994, the zebra mussel was common in the Rideau Canal and throughout the Trent Severn Waterway. By 1995, the invading mussels had moved through the Ohio River to the Mississippi and could be found all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. They have spread like... How, are they, how did they move from one place to the other? In boats. They... they the water, the water gets in the boat, and then the boat gets transported from one lake to another, and then as soon as they do, they get there, and then they start looking for food, and they multiply, like crazy. It's possible, like, how do they get to, like, one end of the beach? They, I mean, the water just takes them, right? Current, yeah. I, I, you know what, that's a good question, I don't know. How will, we can try it in a bit, let, in a bit, yeah, let's do that. Okay, I don't know. The muscles attach to almost any hard object standing in water. The muscles block water intake pipes from the Great Lakes, <coughs> choking hydroelectric plants and fresh water supplies for a number of industries. Do you understand? you listen? Ontario Hydro Municipalities and the Ontario Ministry of the Environment all undertook massive campaigns to prevent the muscles from moving up intake pipes in the generating stations, water treatment plants, and industrial plants. These efforts may also have been diverted attention and resources away from the pollution issues in the Great Lakes. So what do they do? What, what are the kind of problems do they cause? What kind of problems have they caused? Is it they attach to hard services and block intake pipes for factories? Is it they eat too much algae? Is it they kill off local native mussels? Or is it they taste bad and make fish taste bad? I did just say the answer. If you were listening, you would know. That's kind of the whole idea behind this. Briar, I need your head up. Yeah? I'll click that one so it's ready to go. Go really quick, man. You're gonna miss the video. <laughs> Reese, Brody, and Maria. Got an answer, Brody? Did you press enter? Reese. Correct answer is A. Yes, they attach to hard services and they block intake pipes and crackers. They literally attach themselves to just about anything. Right. Here are some pictures that I'm going to show you that I found. Here they've attached themselves to a seawall. Those, those are mussels, those black things there. You can eat some of them. Here they've actually encrusted the lobster. Look at that. 
I'm not really sure what this is, but you can see that they have <laughs> pretty much covered it. Those are, Those are the zebra mussels. other from Asia. What are some of the benefits of having the zebra mussel like? Now this one we're going to have to look for here. If you look there, um, say that again. They've reduced algae. Ducks eat them. Uh, they clean the water, right? Remove pollutants from the water. <laughs> Discarded shells. What does it say there? Oh yeah, they provide homes, right? For what, there, Mister Reed? Okay, so they haven't been entirely bad. There's been good and bad, right? Let me see if reduced algae, awesome. Recognize my ducks, eat them. Remove pollutants. Provide homes for snails. So it hasn't been all bad. Do, does anyone know are there zebra mussels in Lake Dauphin or in any lakes around here? Anyone know? Nobody knows? I don't know. You've never seen one? I will tell you this. They are in Manitoba. And I made this lesson uh, uh, last year. What is Manitoba planning to do in the near future? Summer of 2014. Last summer, the province of Manitoba spent a ton of money. Let's just see. Probably lots of money, right? They were trying to kill off the muscle of potash, and unfortunately, it didn't work. I wonder if they'll try again. It would be nice if the cold weather killed them off, wouldn't it? Okay, so if you had to summarize the big idea, what kind of question would I put on the test, you think, from all this discussion today? What's the one thing you need to know for sure? You need to know what the word exotic species means, right? And you need to basically, whoopsie, you need to know what happens when they get introduced, and you should be able to give me some examples. And what were the two main examples that I talked to you today about? Killer bees and zebra mussels. Excellent. There, I'd like you to do two questions on page 44, please, for me. It may not take you very long at all. I think I went a little too fast today. Page 44, number, what are they? Two and six. Oh yeah, number six is going to take a little bit of research. I'm going to give you a, I'll wait till we're done here. I'd like those questions now, how much time we got here? We've got until 2.15, so let's plan to, I want, I'd like an answer by about 2. 05 ish. So you got like 15 minutes. 